In this session, we're going to talk about decimals. We're going to look at adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing and ordering them. So let's start with adding and subtracting. The important thing to do when you're adding and subtracting decimals is to line up the decimal point rather than the numbers. So for example, I've got 1.7 plus 5.73. I'm not going to line it up like this because it won't work. The thing that I need to do is I need to line up the decimal point. So it should look like this. So when I add them, I'm just going to go down the columns. So I add 0 and 3 to get 3. I add 7 and 7 to get 14, which means I pop the 4 in and I carry the 1. I then do 1 plus 5 is 6 and add the 1 that I carried to get 7. So my answer is 7.43. The same is for subtracting. As long as I line up the decimal points, it will work out just right. So for example, 3.35 take away 1.74. I start at that side and I do 5 take away 4 to get 1. I then can't do 3 take away 7, so I need to borrow 1 from the 3 at the beginning. So I take that, make it a 2, carry the 1, so I've now got 13 take away 7, which is 6. I'm then left with 2 take away 1, which is 1. So my answer is 1.61. Next, let's have a look at multiplying decimals. So these ones are really straightforward. All we need to do is remove any decimal points and just make it a whole number first of all. Then we do the multiplication, and then at the end we pop the decimal points back in. So the first thing we have to focus on is how many times did we move that decimal point to take it out in the first place. For example, 9 times 0 0.3. I need to make 0 0.3, 3 essentially. I need to make it a whole number. So I'm going to move that decimal point out. I'm going to jump it out one space. So I just need to make a mental note that I've moved that one space at the beginning. So then I'm left with 9 times 3. And I know that 9 times 3 is 27. But that's not my final answer. Because I need to think, I moved my decimal point out one place at the beginning. So we best put it back one place. So if I move it back in one space, it becomes 2.7. So 9 times 0 0.3 is 2.7. Now let's look at dividing decimals. The number that we divide by is called the divisor. This needs to be a whole number. Doesn't matter what the other number is, as long as our divisor is a whole number. So let's look at an example. If I've got 5.4 divided by 0 0.06, the number that I'm dividing by, 0 0.06, is my divisor. I need that to be a whole number. So in order to make that a whole number, I need to move the decimal point two spaces. That's the equivalent of times in by 100. So whatever I do to that number, I'm going to do to the other one as well. So because I've times 0 0.06 by 100 to make it 6, I'm going to do 5.4 times 100 as well, and that becomes 540. I'm then left with 540 divided by 6, which is 90. Now I don't need to do anything to change my answer. Because I did the same to both numbers, as we do with fractions, the same to the top, the same to the bottom. Because I did the same to both parts of the division, I've not changed my answer. So 540 divided by 6 is 90. Also, 5.4 divided by 0 0.06 is also 90. So we're done. Finally, let's have a look at ordering decimals. If I've got a list of decimals, I've got this list here. The first thing I'm going to do to make it easier for myself is I'm going to write them in a column and I'm going to line them up by the decimal point. So that will look like this. The decimal point is now lined up. I'm then going to fill in any zeros on the end so that all of my numbers have the same amount of digits. That would look like this. Now all I'm going to do is take it column by column. So I'm going to look at that first column and I'm going to say, where are the smallest numbers? So I've got threes, sixes and zeros. So zero is obviously the smallest, so I'm left with these two here. So I now need to decide out of those two, which is the smallest. So I'm going to look at the next column. I've got a 3 and a 6. So that means the 3 is the smallest. So that is my smallest number out of my list. I'm going to write that one first. Then I can cross it off my list and write that next one that it was also the smallest because it had a 0 at the beginning. So I've now dealt with those two. Cross them off and now let's go back to the beginning. 
Look at that first column again. I've now got threes and sixes. So which is smallest out of those two? It's three. There's only one of those, so I can write that next in my list in order. Cross it off and then go back to the beginning again. So I've now got just these sixes left. So I need to look at the next column to see which is smaller. In the next column, I've got a three, a zero and a zero. So the zeros are the smaller. So we need to compare those two. So going to the next column, I've got two threes. That doesn't help me because they're both the same. So I need to go to the final column and I've got a zero and a six. And the smallest out of those two is the zero. So that's the one I write next in my list. Cross it off, then write the next one, cross that one off. All I'm left with is my final value in the list, which was the 6.3. And I can pop that on the end. I've then written them all out in order from smallest to largest. Final step, just knock off those zeros that you added on at the beginning, because we don't need them, they're just placeholders. So we can knock them off and then have our ordered list done and dusted. So to recap, when adding and subtracting decimals, don't line up the numbers, line up the decimal points. For multiplying, take out the decimal points, do the multiplication, and then pop it back in at the end. But remember to do the right amount of spaces. For dividing, only the number you are dividing by has to be a whole number. So whatever you multiply that by to make it a whole number, just do the same to the other number. Then you don't need to change your answer.